we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, Abla. Good morning, Alvaro. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good, good. Are you ready for this beautiful worship that we have yes. prepared? Yes. Are we all ready? Today is a very special day. Do you know why? Yeah. Today we have a beautiful, very multicultural, multicultural worship, and I'm so happy to that we can spend this time here together. So we are going to do something now. We are going to say Happy Sabbath in our various language. So Alvaro, how do you say Happy Sabbath in your language? My language is Portuguese, not Spanish. I come from Brazil, and in Brazil we say Feliz. Sábado. Feliz Sábado. Feliz Sábado. Beautiful, beautiful. Great. Love your accent. <laughs> and my country is Togo, and we speak French. And in French, we say Bon Sabá. Bon Sabá. Bon bon that sounds beautiful. <laughs> so we have translation in the earphones for those who need it. Wir haben Übersetzung um, über den Kop Kopfhörer. Deutsch ist auf Channel 1 und Ukrainisch auf Channel 3. Yeah, so German on Channel 1 and Ukrainian on Channel 3. Okay, so we are very glad to all see you here. And let's also not forget the people watching us from YouTube. Hi. <laughs> Pleasure to have you all here, too. Yes. At this moment, I would like to invite a very special person to the front, one of my good friends, Mr. Daniel. Daniel is going to present to us a little bit of how the cultural weekend or week has been going. Thank you very much. Um, how is everybody? OK. so. We, we started the um, Week of Cultures with a lunch, um, the bonfire right here. And the following day, on the Sunday, we, we had to plant some plants at the greenhouse, exotic plants, right? Uh, it was something we brought it up and it was successful. Later in the day, we had some games, uh, soccer tournaments and some other games. and. It was, it was also great, you know, a lot of people came around and it was wonderful. We, we, we had a lecture on Monday that was um, with the title, We Are Affected By It And It Hurts. That's about racism and life of freedom for our students and uh, it was wonderful. We, on Wednesday and Thursday, it was a special lunch at uh, Menza. Uh, on Wednesday, we had a different uh, food from Africa. On Thursday, it was a different food too from Africa, and you should have come to taste. I know some of you enjoyed it, yeah, and it was, it was nice. You did, right? Good, good. <laughs> yeah, and I saved the food, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, and today, and today we are here for Shabbat Shalom, and it's, 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 it's for diversity of cultures, diversity of countries from all over the world, and I'm glad that we are all here and we are all looking good, as always. All right, so later today in the evening, we have um, fun time, fun time at Stu's. And I would want to invite everybody to Stu's uh, to come and have some fun with each other and let's just 
socialize and get to know each other. And tomorrow we crown the week with the evening of cultures. Trust me, there's a whole lot of things that you, you should come and see. People dancing, people singing, people saying poems, and yeah, I know you have your, your, your plans ready for whatever you want to do, and I'll be glad to see everybody there. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom. Daniel, thank you so much for the beautiful presentation. Such a wonderful program. So today, we are going to have a special Sabbath with very special people from all around the world. I see some people here that are coming to the front from the US, from Togo and Brazil. I see people from Nigeria. I see people from Ghana. I see people from um, Kenya. I see people from all around the world, and I think it's going to be a beautiful program. So I hope that in this beautiful Sabbath, we can all have a wonderful time together, worshiping and praising the name of our Lord and Savior. Thank Enjoy you so the Sabbath. My hallelujah belongs 
Praise God, church. I would like to invite you all to be on our feet as we sing the song number 296 and 530. Yes, with our masks on. Can we all stand? We 
joy of this glory I thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well it is well with my soul can see. Now we have the time for prayer and I will explain you how we want to do it. This is Veda. She will pray with me in the end. But now we want to have small groups so that you can pray in your mother tongue. If it is German or maybe English or maybe Spanish, I don't know. So, and I want to ask, is there someone who needs a translation? Ist noch jemand da, der eine Übersetzung braucht? Wir haben am Eingang noch Übersetzungsgeräte. Ja, das ist gut möglich, dass ihr noch etwas bekommen könnt. Uh, now we want to have small groups for the prayer time. Maybe two, three, not more than four person. And um, your point for prayer, you can talk in the small groups. And um, I will give you one prayer Maybe you can pray for that. We have an international campus here in Friedensau. We have more international students than German students. Uh, we have 170 international students and around 50 German students. So, uh, Our campus is international and there are some uh, points where we have to come together because we come from different cultures and the understanding is sometimes difficult. Some situation you can interpret wrong and it is necessary that we can talk 
and that we can find a way to work, to study, to live together. I think we are on a good way, but I believe also that we can move forward in this part. So now you have time. I think it is good to have three minutes to pray. You can stand up, you can wear your mask, and then when you are ready, please sit down and be silent. So then we will pray in front here. Shall we please all close our eyes for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, 
We thank you this day for bringing us together as one family. Father, you said in your word that wherever two or three people are met, you are there with us in spirit. We know you are here with us. It's our prayer that whatever that we come here to do, you will guide us. You will protect us. You will lead us in everything that we will do. We commit the community of freedom into thy care. Guide everybody, protect us, and do everybody's will for him or her. We pray we commit the preacher into thy care. Lead him in whatever that he will say to us, so that we will go out and then we will exhibit that thing in the name of Jesus that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you that we can be here in Friedensau. Thank you that we are an international campus. Thank you that you are the middle of our life, that you give us orientation, the right values, so we can stay close together. Please help us to come more and more together, to understand, to see and to feel so that we can glorify you. I pray also, please listen to all the prayer, what we have done now, that we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. At this moment, we would like to share some announcements with you. And the first one is a very special one. On the 25th of June, there is a conference Sabbath worship. And this, you can see a bit more information in this page if you, if you received it. In the, in the marked area, um, we need to um, write down our names for this program. We can either do it on the website that you can see on the page or you can also do it um, at the entrance here at the arena. And now we also have some other announcements about the offerings. Exactly. So we are going to have some special donations uh, today as well as next Sabbath. So today we are going to have a um, special donation as aid for those areas in the world where there is catastrophe. And next Sabbath, we're also going to have a donation which is going to serve to build the church in the North German Union. That's right. Both of these special offerings, they will be marked in small envelopes with the, with the word Herzengabe, so offerings from the heart. All right. And we also take our offering at the end of the service as usual. Yes. The last of the announcements for today is that we are needing assistance with the transport of our Ukrainian friends. So if you can drive and you would be willing to help with the assistance, you could contact Pastor Stefan Herschele. Thank you very much. Thank I would, you. I'd like to invite Miss Fry for the children's story. Hello, everybody. My name is Emily Fry. I come from the United States. Um, and I'm going to try to tell the children's story both in English and in German. Hallo alle, ich heiße Emily Fry. Ich komme aus den USA und ich probiere gleichzeitig auf Englisch und auf Deutsch den Kindergeschichte zu erzählen. Uh, deswegen habe ich meine Notizen hier und die Übersetzerin kann mich korrigieren. So today's theme or just sort of the theme of the cultural week is um, sort of unity. Um, the Thema ist, man, ich habe die gleiche Wort uh, gewählt, weil ich weiß diese Wort nicht. Zusammenheit? Uh, Einheit, danke. Einheit. Um, and through diversity, durch uh, vielseitig. 
So I know a lot about that, or a little bit about that, um, because my family lives on a farm. I know a little bit about this topic, because my family lives on a Bauernhof. Lebt. Uh, we have a lot of plants on the farm. Um, we have a very large garden. My parents really like to garden. We have a lot of different plants. Uh, we have a large garden, a garden uh, with many different plants. And I am going to try, since I don't have a lot of kids to tell a funny story to, I'm going to ask some questions and see if you can guess amongst yourselves what plant I'm talking about. Uh, weil ich keine Kinder hier habe, ich probiere ein paar Fragen zu stellen. Alle kann so zusammensprechen und probieren zu finden die Pflanze, darüber ich spreche. Um, they are mostly American plants. I'm sorry. Die sind normalerweise amerikanisch. Tut mir leid. The first plant um, is one that lots of people like. However, it's very difficult in a garden because it will grow anywhere. Uh, it has very deep roots, and you can pick every single one of this plant, clear your garden of it, and in spring, your entire garden will be filled with them. They are very irritating. Diese erste Pflanze ist eine, die viele mögen, aber es ist sehr schwer, das aus einem Garten zu pflücken. Die sind überall, sie haben tiefen Wurzeln, man kann dein ganzes Garten so klären, und die sind da im Frühling. Noch, noch mal. Wenn jeder keine Idee hat, das ist Kartoffeln. If no one knows, it's potatoes. I hate planting potatoes. They are so much trouble. Ich hasse Kartoffeln zu pflanzen. Sie sind so schwer. The second plant is one that doesn't look very pretty for most of the year. It's brown, it's sort of scraggly, thorns, very irritating. However, bees really like it. It smells wonderful and it will bring thousands of bees to your garden. Die zweite Pflanze ist eine, der ein bisschen uh, unschön ist, ist so eklig, es ist, hat Dornen, ist so klein, braun, immer, aber es riecht sehr, sehr gut und es bringt viele, viele Bienen. In Englisch, it's called lemon balm und auf Deutsch Bienenkraut oder Zitronenmelisse. It's really important if you want bees in your garden, they, our entire garden hums with them. Und so ganzes Garten so Mach so ein, ein Gerausch so mit Bienen, wegen unseres uh, Bienenkrauts. The third is a flower. It doesn't smell very good. It's okay, it just doesn't smell good. Um, some people think it's pretty. It's kind of orange or yellow, has lots of petals, but it's sort of, it doesn't grow tall. It sort of does a little thing like this. It sort of sits like this, and it never gets any bigger. It just does this. Uh, meine dritte Pflanze ist eine, die riecht nicht so gut. Es, manche finden es schön, es ist so orange oder gelb, hat viele uh, Blumenblätter, uh, aber es sitzt so immer und entwickelt nicht und ja, so wachsend nicht. Uh, it's a marigold, called marigolds, oder es heißt Ringelblume. Um, Most insects don't like it. Viele, viele so Käfer und sowas, viele Insekten mögen diese Pflanze nicht. So es ist sehr wichtig, wenn man viele Pflanzen hat, dass man das pflanzt, weil dann kommt so schlechte Insekten nicht. So it's very important that you plant this flower because you won't get bad bugs because they don't like it. Uh, jetzt habe ich drei zusammen. Uh, die sind alle, alle Pflanzen, die sehr, sehr giftig sind. Sehr gefährlich, aber sind in fast jeder Garten in den USA. My third one is three plants together. They're extremely poisonous, um, but people in the U.S. plant them in all of their gardens. They're very pretty. Die sind alle Blumen, they're all flowers. Um, von einer, wenn du einer isst, kannst du einen Herzinfarkt bekommen. Es ist sehr, sehr giftig. Uh, one of them, if you eat it, You can die of a heart attack. It's extremely poisonous. Aber es ist überall. Meine Familie hat viele Pflanzen von dieser, dieser Blume. Die erste ist Fingerhut. The first is Foxglove. Uh, die zweite ist Calla Lily. The second one is Calla Lilies. They're extremely, extremely poisonous, especially to animals. Uh, Calla Lilies sind sehr giftig, in besonders für Tiere. Uh, und die dritte ist Iris oder Iris. The third is irises. That's one of my favorite flowers. Eine von meinen Lieblingsblumen. Aber die sind sehr giftig. 
Aber meine Familie hat viele, viele Irises. Irises, die sind überall. Extremely poisonous, but my family has a lot of them. They're all over the place. Uh, the fourth is one that, if you plant it, can take over entire acres of land. If uh, We used to have some wild ones, and they just keep growing. They don't stop. They're covered in thorns. They'll take over entire houses and break them by crushing them. Diese ist einer der, wenn, wenn pflanzt, es, es entwickelt überall. Es wächst überall, es kann ein ganzes Haus so nehmen und, weiß ich nicht, durchbrechen, unterbrechen. Es ist, es ist ein bisschen gefährlich und wenn sie wild sind, kann sie überall wachsen. It's blackberries, one of my favorite fruits. They will grow everywhere and they'll crush things. Die sind uh, Brombeeren, eine von meinen Lieblingsobst. Uh, and the final one is, again, three together. They are plants that, if grown, will take all of the moisture out of the soil. They'll suck all of it out. And if you plant them, you have to plant new ones in their place later, a different kind of plant, to put moisture back in the soil. Uh, die letzte, die sind drei zusammen. Wenn gepflanzt, sie nehmen alle diese Wasser aus der Erde. Man muss etwas anderes da pflanzen, weil es so getrocknet ist. Weil sie, sie nehmen so viel Wasser. Aber die sind überall gepflanzt, but they're planted everywhere. Die sind sehr wichtig, they're very important. They are wheat, corn and alfalfa. Weizen, Mais und Alfalfa. So wie man sehen kann, wir haben viele Pflanzen, die Probleme haben oder sehr unterschiedlich sind, aber sind noch geliebt. As you can see, there are a lot of plants that are very important, that lots of people like, but are difficult and have a lot of differences. So in der Erde können wir sehen zwischen Menschen, die ganz unterschiedlich sind, die vielleicht nicht immer perfekt sind, aber sind noch sehr wichtig. Uh, we can see that in the earth. There are a lot of different kinds of people. They can be very, very different, and they can still be very imperfect, but they're all very important. Und sind noch geliebt and also loved. Danke für deine Aufmerksamkeit. Thank you for your attention. going to sing a song that is one of the most popular songs, You Are My All in All. precious Jew, Lord, to give up, I'll be a fool, you are my all in all, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name.
And at this moment, I would like to present the preacher of this morning. I would like to, I would like for him to just stand up a quick mo moment so that the congregation can see him. Let, let them see your beautiful smile. Maybe we can greet him with a warm, um, with a warm wave. Yes. So, thank you so much. His name is Den Owusu. He studied here in Friedensau, if I'm not mistaken, from 2011 to 2012. He can confirm it for us later on. Um, he is now working as a pastor in Hamburg, and he has two churches. He has a beautiful family. He's married to a beautiful wife, and he has three kids. Two of these three kids now is a, is a very beautiful good news for us that we can congratulate him later on. Two of these kids were born last mm, two weeks ago on the 5th of May. They are twins, one boy and one girl, and we are so very happy for him. He has a few hobbies that he would like to share with us today. He is very good at preaching. We saw that yesterday in Shabbat Shalom. That's one hobby of his. He also loves to read, as he mentioned. And a very strong one as well is the music. He's a music enthusiast, so much so that during his time here in Friedensau, he was one of the leaders of the choir. So we are looking forward to the message that he will bring for us today. So before that, let's sing one last song. And for that, I would like to invite us all to stand up. Song number 330. The Bible reading for today's sermon is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 33. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said thus, O oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died in your place, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we bring before your throne the preacher of the hour, Pastor Dan Owusu. We pray that you anoint his lips. And we also present the congregation. We pray that you consecrate our hearts as we hear from you today, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 
Happy Sabbath to you all. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Um, in my local language, you will say Homedapa. Uh, I have Kweku here, um, a Ghanaian, and I know so many Ghanaians are here too. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak in this um, occasion. Um, it is funny, you know, in a way. Um, last night I was talking to one of them. I told them, um, I was saying, sometimes you have to exit before you are invited as the guest. <laughs> you know, I was um, a student here in 2011. I came to Freedom Cell as um, a student. And um, yeah, it means so many years ago, if I can calculate, I'm talking about, about 10 years, over 10 years ago. We are in 2022 now. And thank God for what Freedom Soul um, did to me. Um, I have never regret, uh, regretted coming here and also, I mean, being part of this wonderful um, family. Thank you for the sponsors and uh, um, all those who contributed in transforming our lives. Um, we are always grateful. And I pray that the good Lord will also continue blessing this um, noble university that we will always continue in the good works which um, we are doing. Um, this morning, um, I would like to um, concentrate on the love of God. Yeah. And I will link it with unity in diversity, as um, our theme is. Um, Pastor Dietmar made me aware that we have to look at the two sides at the same time. So I'm trying as much as I can. I want to also submit to you that I have um, given the sermon and the uh, message today a subtitle, The Greatest Exchange. The Greatest Exchange. Um, I'm not used to standing before the podium. In fact, I don't want to be stuck there. So I pleaded with my, um, the media men and they gave me this so I can move around. Don't worry, when I'm coming to you, I'm not coming to lift you up. Um, it is normal. The greatest exchange. And we will look at the life of Absalom and link it to Jesus and also David, what he did. Um, before I start, I want to pray with you. Shall we pray? Um, our gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you this day. We are asking that you identify yourself with us. Have your way in this place. Speak to your children. Use me as a vessel. And I believe that Today, all the glory will be yours for what you are about to do. We thank you for an answered prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. A dripping blood red X. You may say, what is the meaning of this? When you have time and you are acquainted with the Time magazine, let me say the most popular magazine, as I know <laughs> in the world now, Whenever there is um, a, 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 the death of a great, uh, let me say, terrorist, or a person whom the world declares as one who deserves to die, they normally present this person with a big X in front of his face in the magazine. In fact, we are talking about the death of Osama bin Laden and other, I mean, terrorists, which... Um, the United States have able, in one way or the other, to hunt them down. You see, I'm not here to defend who is to die and who is to live. In fact, that is not in my hands. And I'm not here to also console those who lost their, I mean, loved ones in this particular situation. And I'm not here to defend why we shouldn't kill him or why he should live. But my point is how the world rejoiced when Bin Laden was assassinated, or let me say taken away by the United States in a very, let me say, crucial and a unique military operation. Justice has been saved. That was what the then president, Barack Obama, said when he delivered the message to the world. But my question is, are we supposed to rejoice as Christians too over the death 
of a sinner, over the death of someone who also, let me say, Christ died for. No, I'm not here to say we were wrong or we were right. I just want you to ponder on the question. We rejoiced. And that is how we are. As individuals, as, I mean, friends, even as loved ones, how do you rejoice when someone whom you hate, (laughs) someone you don't want to see in your life, is taken away by death? Are you happy about it? The Bible tells us otherwise. In fact, God is not happy when we die in our sins. In fact, Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 tells us that God is willing and he is always calling us back to him. He says he has no pleasure in the death of a sinner. God is not happy about it. And yet, in fact, I am tempted to say that even Christians rejoice. We rejoice when someone in the church who is tormenting our lives, <laughs> he is not making us happy when he is taken away by, let me say, a disease or a sudden death. It is sad that we rejoice in this. But as true Christians, it shouldn't happen like that. And today, I want to present to you a man who mimics or who um, epitomizes this kind of behavior. He's not happy about the death of a sinner. I'm talking about King David. David, the king of Israel. In fact, our key text was taken from 2 Samuel chapter, 13, um, chapter 18, verse 33, where we read, Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chambers over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, Oh, my son, oh, my son, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, I wish, I wish I had died in your place. Now, this is not the first time David is crying. So I want you to look at it from a different perspective. I mean, this is not the first time he is weeping. When you read 2 Samuel verse 1, um, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 25 to 27, we are told that David wept bitterly when his friend and his love, I mean, the, the one he cherished most, Jonathan, died. He wept and he said, how the mighty have fallen. But this time, he was not weeping. Because of a mighty man, he was crying and groaning over the death of his own son, Absalom. Now, I want you to take a look at Absalom and his life. Now, um, the, the question is, why would a whole David king weep like this? over Absalom. Now, uh, and I'm very sure the life of Absalom and the name and the meaning is very, very popular. You know how stubborn Absalom was. His name, Absalom, means my father is peace. And Absalom was very stubborn. In fact, it is said that David had a soft heart, a soft, um, let me say, spot for his son Absalom, so that Absalom never does, I mean, there is nothing wrong. Whatever Absalom is doing is always okay with Father David. He never, ever had any problem with the behavior of of Absalom. Now, I want to list a few things that Absalom did so that we will go straight to what I want you to take home today. You know, Absalom once took justice in his own hands. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 13, he killed his own half-brother, Ammon, for raping his sister, Tamar. Now, we are talking about the king and his son committing murder. And his father said nothing. According to the scriptures, Absalom after this, I mean, incident, he, 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 he ran away. I mean, he took to his heels and went to a, another place, and he stayed there for almost three years. When you continue to read the scriptures, the Bible tells us that David's heart 
was longing to see and to have a relationship again with his son, Absalom. So that David didn't talk about anything. I mean, he didn't even decide to seek for justice. What even his son, Absalom, has done. This is the son we are talking about. Over whom? <laughs> David wept. In fact, to summarize how stubborn Absalom is, when you when read the scriptures, we are told that he, he wanted to be like his father. He was contending with his father when it comes to power. He raised, I mean, he erected, and uh, um, let me, a statue, a statue, something like a statue. When you read the um, the the history, um, the history historians tell us that um, Absalom erected something like a, a, a statue in the middle of the city, and he, he named it after himself, trying to tell the, the the whole children of Israel that he is also there, the king's son. When Absalom is going somewhere, when he's traveling, there are so many servants, so many chariots were running in front of Absalom. The prince, he is coming. And everyone held him because he was handsome, according to the scriptures. Now, the Bible says, Rahel was beautiful. I don't want to doubt that because for the scriptures to say that she was beautiful tells us that she was really beautiful. In fact, Sarah was also beautiful. For the Bible to say Absalom was handsome, it means he was. In fact, we have, the, the, the Bible tells us that he, he had a long hair, so handsome that even I am sure that so many women wanted to have Absalom as their husband. This is Absalom, the son of David. The worst thing is that Absalom could go so far to sleep with the concubines of his father, not in a room, in a pitch tent. I mean, they will erect a tent, put down a tent for Absalom, and the concubines of David will be coming and going. Doing all these things just to provoke, let me say, God, not only the king. Of course, David will not talk about the stubbornness of his son. So that it came to a point, Absalom decided to take over the kingdom. I'm just trying to summarize the story, you know, because I'm giving a few minutes. And in, in, in trying to contend with his father, th th there was a division in the kingdom. The, 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 the nation, the army, were also divided so that some were aligned to um, Absalom and others still remained faithful to David. And they decided to pursue or to run after Absalom, try to, to bring him back home. And you know, when you read the Bible, the Bible tells us that even David tried to plead with his army commander, Joab, and those who are seeking after, I mean, Absalom. He said, please deal gently with him. This young man, he is stubborn, but please be gentle for my sake. Just be gentle with Absalom. I love him still. That is what David was trying to tell them. But the Bible says things didn't go as Absalom and his, let me say, rebellious army. Those who wanted to have coup d'etat, they couldn't survive. Second Samuel chapter 18, verse 19 to 23, tells us how Absalom lost his life. His beautiful hair got into, let me say, in the midst of a, a, a tree, and he was left hanging as his horse left him and his legs. Let me say, it was like he has committed suicide. 
when you read how the report went to him, the one who went to David said, King, may it happen to all those who hate you. What has happened to Absalom? What has happened? Is my son dead? Is my son gone? And that was where our sister read the scriptures. When David heard this news, the Bible says, the king was deeply moved. He was very sad. He, he was so sad that he, he decided to go into his chambers and, and weep. At least, as we normally say it, the, 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 the men don't actually cry so much. Sometimes they try to hide their emotions. So King David, as a king, didn't want to weep in the public. So he, he was going into his chambers. And as he was going, the Bible says he was crying. Oh, my son. Absalom, my son. Oh, my son, Absalom. Absalom, my son. My son. I wish I had died in your stead. Why should you die in your sin, Absalom? You are too young to die. Why, Absalom, my son? Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, my son, Absalom. When you read the scriptures, the army commanders were very angry. In fact, one went to um, David and told him, my, 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 my king, what are you doing? Do you want all of us to die instead of your only son? Of course, David didn't want it that way. He wanted his son back. At least he could sit him down and talk wisdom in his head. <laughs> Maybe he can impart some kind of morality into, onto, into him or onto him. But Absalom, Absalom died. Oh, my son, my son, Absalom, my son, I wish I had died in your place. David loved Absalom so much, but I am very sure that his love for him reached an impermeable wall. In fact, he got to a point he can't do anything about what has happened or what is about to happen to him. I am sure that if Absalom was standing there and David was standing there and Joab is about to decide, whom should I kill? I am very sure David would rather consider his decision. My point is this, that David couldn't have died for his son, even though he was saying, I wish I could have died for you. He was saying this out of emotions. He was saying this out of his sorrow. His, his, he was saying this because he's so sad, so worried. Why should my son Absalom lose his life in this particular situation? I wish I had died for him. I wish he, he, he didn't live a, a life like this. I wish... I wish I had my son back. Oh, my son, Absalom. And I'm very sure this is the way God is also weeping for us. He's also weeping when he sees that we don't love ourselves. Oh, my church. My church. I died for you. I prayed that you will be united. I prayed that you will stay in peace. I prayed that you, 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 you love one another and move on. Not nepotism and segregation and any other thing. Not wars. No, I prayed that you will stay with one another. I died for you. Oh, my church. And God is so also telling you, oh, my son, oh, my daughter, oh, my brother, oh, my sister. I wish, I wish you remember that I loved you with an everlasting love. 
How I wish I had died in your place. Now, when you read other translations, it makes the, 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 the test very, very I mean, clear, and it throws more light on it. The basic Bible English I mean, version um, translates um, this test this way. It says, if only my life might have been given for yours. Oh, Absalom, my son. When you read the Debbie Bible, it says, would God I had died in thy stead. The English Standard Version says, would I have died instead of you? Perhaps David couldn't, I mean, died this death for Absalom. His, death, his love for him has come to an end. Of course, he said this out of emotion. But, but today, I, I want to present to you one man who didn't do this out of emotion. I mean, he didn't say it. He did it. Jesus died for you, and he died for me. He didn't say, I wish I died for you. No, don't worry. I mean, he did it on the cross. And when he was there, he said, it is finished. It is finished. All your sins are wiped away. If only you will believe. If only you will trust. If you only you will love one another. Remember, I died for you. That is what Jesus is saying today. He is not like in David who couldn't have died for his own son, Absalom. Oh, my brother, my sister, God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, <laughs> he died for you. He died for me too. And he says, there is no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for his brother or his sister. God is saying, don't die in sin. Don't die in hatred. I mean, give up. Be humble. Don't die in racist attitudes because we need each other. I mean, recently when the issues were rising up with Ukraine and Russia, I mean, I'm not here because to, I'm not a politician, you know. But it tells us that we need one another. I mean, there is not a single country who is independent. We all need one another. God is watching you. He's waiting that you love one another. We stay united because the very poor people, <laughs> they are the people sometimes... God has ordained to help you. My point is this. God died for you. He died for me. The cross unites us. And he's saying, Oh, my people. Oh, my brother. Oh, my sister. Don't forget. I died for you. I pray that the good Lord will bless you and that you, he, he will not also weep like David did. For him, he died for you and he's waiting that you will come to him. When you believe in him, you will be saved. In fact, he died for everyone so that he says, look to me and you will be saved. I pray that you stay with one another, live with one another in peace. And remember, God is willing to exchange everything, to give up everything for you and for me. May the good Lord bless you and may he keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
shall we pray? Shall we all rise as we pray? Our most gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the songs, for your word, and we thank you that you've identified yourself with us and you've blessed us this Sabbath. I'm praying that your word, which we have heard, will be planted in our hearts, that it will bear fruits and also transform our lives. I am praying for each and everyone here that, Lord, if there, if there is any burden on our hearts, if there is anything that we are praying about, we believe that you are a prayer answering God. So please attend to our prayers, and in your due time, let us see your miracle in our lives. As we depart from here, we are asking that you continue to stay with us throughout the Sabbath, and let your blessings abound to us all and our families. I pray that the good Lord will bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And in all things, may it be well with your soul that you may be prepared for his soon coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Stand again and joyfully sing the song number 340, 340. Jesus saves. May we receive the blessing. May the peace of God grant us more life abundant in our spiritual walk. May he reveal himself step by step into our hearts that we may walk as he wishes. May he grant us peace for the coming week and fill us with love as a church. In your name, amen. It is time now we sing our last song. Song number 214, We Have This Hope. <laughs> 